Hello, Adalo makers. Uh, my name is Jason Gilmore, and I am still the relatively new uh, CTO here at the company. And uh, joining me on this video is my colleague, uh, Kyle Belford, who is the customer advocate and resident expert of all things Adalo. And um, we published a new blog post last week regarding optimization. And specifically, there were uh, five tips um, for improving your Adalo app performance. Those were covered in this blog post. We also published a link to that blog post over on the forum. And somebody had mentioned that they would appreciate it if we could um, perhaps film a video or maybe a few videos um, going over these tips. So Kyle and I thought it might be fun to uh, jump on a Zoom and uh, record a video and, and walk through these different tips um, using an actual, um, actual application that was built in Adalo. So I'm going to go ahead and hand over the uh, microphone to Kyle, who will share his screen, and we're going to walk through this, and I'm sure I'm going to learn something along the way as well. So take it away, Kyle. Thanks, Jason. So one thing I've learned in building with Adalo, and I've built with Adalo for almost, gosh, three or four years now. So I've I've done it the wrong way. I've learned the right way. There's just a lot of different ways you can do things in Adalo. And what we're trying to pinpoint at Adalo is how to make an app as efficient and performant as possible. But this is an app that I've built. It's to store recipes. If you're like me and my family, we love going to online to find recipes, but we hate reading someone's life story and everything about it. So we just want to condense that down and make it clean and easy to use. If you notice, I've got a lot of iterations here from different ways that I've built things or test things. One thing I'm learning when I'm building is if you don't need a screen, just delete it. It it causes your screen your app size to be larger than it needs to be, and you can delete it. And if you've never used version history, you can just save a design version on that, and it'll save that screen. So if you really want to go back to it, you can always restore that version. But just, let's just look at the basic functionality of the app. I'm going to view and preview. Here's my planned recipes for the week. And so this is my homepage. If I click here, I can open this and it's got the image. It's got what it is. It's got all the ingredients that I need and then directions for how to cook the, the particular dish. If I hit this plus sign, what this will do is create a grocery list item for me. So when I'm shopping, I can go to that grocery list based on my recipe. This is actually a custom action, so it will allow me to know what aisle this is on and put that in there for me. So it makes it really easy. Then I've got just basic things here, like I can favorite it, mark it that I want to do it today, go to the web link, edit, and you can add manual grocery items here. A pretty simplistic app with a lot of complex things going on in the background. One thing that you'll do if you start saving recipes is you'll start accumulating a lot of recipes. Uh, one thing that we've accumulated is over 600 different recipes that we're up to now. One thing I noticed right away is trying to load 600 items on a list at one time is just not a good idea. Uh, <laughs> if you go to any other app, if you go to Starbucks, if you go to your local grocery app, they don't load 600 items at one time. They load maybe 10 to 15 at one time. And I started adopting this list. This is page list from our marketplace. And what this allows me to do is take those 600 different recipes and use pagination. And now I'm able to click through without any issue. And it also allows me to, let's say, I want to make this pasta. I can click here and go back. And my place in my list is maintained, which is super important for user experience. Previously, I had this just as a custom list. And with that custom list, I started to notice that it was running really, really slow. And that if I used the load as user scrolls option, it would be great. But when I clicked on it and then went back to the list, it would jump and I wouldn't know where I was in the list. And it was a big complaint by people who use my app. The one thing that single-handedly changed my app though was doing the image optimization that was mentioned in the blog post. 
that particular feature allowed me to continue to use my app. What I was doing, and I can show you in my recipes, I have recipes on here that I have found like in a book. There wasn't a particular website that I could just put in and pull the images and things like that from. Um, let me grab one of those. So for example, this one, this cauliflower fried rice, this was just found in a book and we had to create an image using my iPhone. So I just took a picture of the picture in the book and I uploaded it with my phone. But what was happening is that image was becoming five to six megabytes in size. And so I went through a series of uploading three or four recipes at one time. And then I went to go look at them on the find portion of the app. And it crashed my app on my phone, on my iPhone. I think it was 13 Pro at the time. It was just crashing. And I thought, oh, man, something's wrong with Adalo. I, I need to like check and see if there's a service interruption. This was late at night. I almost pinged the team. And then I thought, wait a second, what's happening? Because it's not crashing on my computer, which has better hardware specs than my phone. And so I started doing some investigation and realized that it was just the size of the image. It was just overloading the app and causing it to crash, which then led me to the discovery of the parameters that we have now added for you when you upload the image. Uh, this, this is an old version that I used. It's just a simple parameter of Q equals 20. And that took that five megabyte file size all the way down to, in some cases to less than a megabyte, which then allows the app to run and function and not crash. But if you're anything like me, anytime you build an app, you want it just to continue to have better performance. And that's where the pagination came in. The way I have this set up right now is I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different items. I did that just based on the screen size that I use my phone. It's easier to see all nine items at one time that can be adjusted to whatever you prefer. But loading nine items instead of the 600 that I was loading with the poor images, it just made my app run so much faster. And I I can't tell you the difference that it has made for, for my app. Um, it's made it usable again. And most of all, my wife actually enjoys using it now instead of having it crash and not work anymore. Um, one thing that I, my next step that I want to work towards is right now I have these recipes and these are my planned recipes and I can click here and I can assign it to a day, which is nice. But what I start to notice is as I start doing list within list, and this is what this is, it starts causing some UI issues and it, it doesn't work as well. And, and that would bring me to avoid using list within list. Like I think, I'm going to have to come up either with a design or something different where I can click on a day and see what I'm going to be cooking that day or have the app recognize that today's Wednesday and just show me Wednesday's recipe. Um, this design was what um, was showing on the find. So you can imagine having this many different items was causing a, a lot of issues. And let's just take a look. how this is set up. It's, it's just a really simplistic setup with this component. This component really uses a lot of tools of our simple list, which is by far our most performant list. And I was even working with our grocery items today because I started noticing I had the grocery list within a list to be able to separate it through the aisle that was, was happening. And it became where it was difficult to scroll because I was asking the screen to do too much at one time. And so I just went to a simple list and now my grocery list runs super quick. And if I get this, I can just check it off and now it's gone off my list. And it's so much faster than, than previously when I was trying to do a list within a list. So firsthand knowledge, like this is just going to run so much faster using the Adalo list. Um, I want to go to a different app to show you pulling counts from record properties and what the difference that can make in an app. So this is my budgeting app that I made 
for my family to use. I didn't want to sign up for one more uh, budgeting tool and link my bank to one more system so someone else would have access to our records. So I, I made this. And what this does is it goes through and it tells me based on each category how much I have left in the that particular category. So this could be the category for food and it would have like restaurants, groceries. And if you're like my family, we have a separate coffee budget because we just love to drink coffee. And then it would tell me how much was remaining in each of the different categories. What I was doing previously was I was going into this is this line item and asking and doing something like this. I was doing this month line item, how much is remaining some that, but then I was going through and making sure that it was the filter was based on this particular line item ID in the transactions that I was doing. So you, as you can imagine, doing that for one item not a not a big deal. But when you have twenty or thirty different line items that are all doing that calculation every time you would come to this screen, it was almost making the app unusable. And so what I did is on any place that we add an expense or add a transaction, when I click this done button, it updates the budget line item here. And so if I just go into these month line items, it has a spot to do the remaining. And, and what that would do is like, if this was an expense transaction, I would say, whatever is in the remaining, minus it by the amount that I put here. So if it was a hundred and I took $10 off, there would be 90 remaining. And so now this front screen doesn't have to do any calculations for this particular item. It just pulls that from that property from that particular line item. This is really popular to do if you're doing a social media app and you are trying to count the comments for that particular post. You're able to just do that when someone hits add a new post. You just take the current number and just add one more. And that would pull that instead of doing a, a, a calculation and every time this screen loads to do that calculation. Jason, any questions or thoughts? Quite a few actually in terms of um, at least I, I've been sitting here taking notes as you've walked through this. Uh, for my own, both for my own benefit, but I'll also put these in the uh, video notes as well. And um, just for the, I guess the audience's benefit, my, my background, my career has been spent um, doing hands-on custom coding of all kinds of different types of applications. And what I find personally so interesting about Adalo is from a performance perspective is the parallels between optimizations that you make when you are um, when you're writing the custom code for example maybe to talk to a database right there's there's a performant quote unquote right way to talk to a database and there's also a non-performant way so like maybe starting with the the most recent topic that you um, you mentioned um, regarding um, pulling counts from record properties instead of constantly calculating them. That's like a mm -hmm. great thing you also want to do when you're building a custom app. Why? Because you don't want to constantly um, on every page view, every screen load, you don't want to constantly be deriving these counts, these aggregates and so forth, because you can quietly calculate them in the background, even for example, upon button press as you as you demonstrated, or maybe according to some schedule, if the calculation was a little more um, difficult to derive, right? So I, I really like um, the, the topics that you covered because um, again, I'm seeing a lot of these parallels, but I'm going maybe back to the very top of the, the list. I found it very interesting how you mentioned um, the benefit of effectively modeling your app after what you're seeing in high traffic apps, right? Your local grocery store app or your, your Starbucks app, right? Like a lot of the design decisions that they made were obviously not by accident. They were made in order to accommodate a large number of users 
who aren't using and interacting with that app. So I think it's a really good idea to um, take a look at those apps, um, figure out which ones you like the most, like, and, and ask yourself, well, how can I model my own app after what, for example, Starbucks did from a user experience point. Um, secondarily, you mentioned the third-party component for pagination. I think this is a still, even today, maybe one of those um, um, real gems of a download that maybe isn't talked about enough, and maybe we can do that in a future video, right? There are all these great third-party components. Um, one of them is pagination. Go take advantage of that. I'll also mention to the audience that we are incidentally working on our own native pagination feature, um, which should be out very, very shortly. One of our developers, Daniel, in fact, is working on that as we speak. Um, you mentioned optimizing images. That blog post, which I'll put in the video notes, um, that also happens. My blog post contains links to a few online free image compressors, right? So you can use a compressor online to know exactly what that image is going to look like following compression. Um, but also you can take advantage of recent improvements to Adalo's own image optimization processes. And that was coincidentally covered in a blog post that we published last Friday. And then finally, my final note here is, and I think this is a really powerful one, avoid lists within lists. If you can instead change that user interface to accommodate additional screens, well, you, you should probably do that if, it, if that is at all possible. Yeah, I, I think those are all great points. And as I'm sitting here thinking about building the app, the, a lot of questions, when I, when I jump on with a maker and try to help them with their performance, I have to ask this question, why did you do that? Not as like, I'm accusing you of something. It's just, I truly don't understand why you have to have it this way. And so rebuilding and tweaking my recipe app, I've really started to ask myself, do I have to have it like this? Or was this just a personal preference based on whatever I was feeling that day? And so back to my you know, planned section, it's worth it to me to rebuild this screen so it's more performant and I can get to the information that I need quickly as opposed to seeing what day it was and even taking the time to build that feature out to get to assign it to Wednesday can be cumbersome. And then you've got to figure out, well, how, what is that flow? My purpose for this app, and you have to think about this when you're building, especially for a small business or a medium-sized business, like what am I doing with this app to make my employees or whoever's using it life really easy? Because that's why you built an app. And so I'm going to rethink how this can work and, and, and rebuild this. And it, it's going to just be better. Like the more iterations that you can make of your app, the more you challenge yourself to make it go faster. Do I really need this on the screen is a question that I'm asking myself a lot when I'm building. Yes. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Kyle, for walking us through those five tips. I certainly learned a lot and I hope the, uh, the Adalo Maker community has as well. Uh, stay tuned. Kyle and I um, are going to be creating more videos about different topics, including performance. So stay tuned. We'll be publishing them both on the blog, on our YouTube channel, other socials, and uh, mentioning them on the forum as well. So thanks again. Um, have a great day.